Have you ever considered using Mr. B's Green Tree? Well, in this video, we're going to get into this nutrient line. You're here with Mark Batwell at PerfectGardens.com. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. It's always helpful. Are you tired of getting crappy advice from your local hydroponics store? Join our membership, get direct access to me, and let's turn your crop around in days. Okay, so just a couple of days ago, got with another client, and he's using Mr. B's Big Trees. I've actually have seen this nutrient line around over the last few years, but I've never used it personally myself, so I wanted to dive into this product and kind of learn a little bit more about it. Some of the things I did pretty much notice almost immediately is that these people, I would say, live in a little bit less of a cognitive dissidence reality and more of in a slightly uneducated reality. Uh, the reason why is because as I got into learning about their products, and once, what do I do, right? I check out the label and then I also, I turn the bottle around and I read what's in it. And so as I started diving through their website, I realized that this company has probably grown pretty dramatically over the last couple of years, not really because it's a great product, but because of, of high. When I come right here to the instructional videos, I come over to the MSDS forms. Nothing too fancy right here. I, I appreciate that they at least do have them. Their website, some of their website doesn't really work. And then it's pretty much this guy right here. I, he might be the owner. I'm not totally sure. And he has a, a big old grow and it looks cool, right? So as you can see right here, if you played it, this guy is just showing that he has big trees and he's saying that the product's great. And obviously, because he's saying it, the product must be great. Obviously, that doesn't fly with me just because I have a certain level of core values in my growing experience. You know, I've developed my belief structure around that we also have to do something for the soil. Is the soil is going to keep, keep giving back to us generation after generation. It's not about just the immediate payout. So as I started to dive into the products, I learned or realized that the ingredients, when you dive down lower to the ingredients, it actually is the same ingredients for all of the, the products. So you have the grow, you have the all-purpose right here. You can see 888. You dive down, ingredients, just look at these right here, 5.2. This one's the grow 744, 5.2. Then this one's the grow 15, 5, 5, 5.2, nitrogen 7, 7, 7. Come right here. This is the bloom 7. So what does this mean, right? Well, whoever is making this product, you know, just did a, a simple copy and paste and basically copied and pasted the same description on every single product. And maybe it was his web developer that did it and never got it back around to updating the website. And first off for me, this is a small flag. It's not a big flag, it's just a small flag because at the end of the day, you know, it's just, a, you know, probably some guy in the, you know, web guy, a lot of people, they make a product, but they don't know anything about making a website. And they're still busy nowadays that selling the product that they just don't come around to updating the website. Still though, for me, the guy only has, you know, six or seven products. I would do my best to represent him to the best of his ability and actually have the proper information if someone was trying to research it. Since I couldn't get any information here, I actually reached back out to my client. I had him take a picture of the backs of each of these bottles. And all I was able to do was get the bloom and the grow formula. One of the things I immediately noticed here was obviously, as you can see right at the top, it says the guaranteed nitrogen is seven. So there's a most likely this guaranteed analysis of seven right here is showing the actually what's in this product. So as you can see right here on the label on the website is M nominal nitrogen is 0.67. Right here on the label is 0.7. And it has a total of roughly 1.15 other water-soluble nitrogen. But on the label right here, it has 1.3. But then it has 5.2 uh, water-insoluble nitrogen. And then on the label, it says 5.1. So there's that 0.2 difference up here. And obviously, they're putting the ure urea-based nitrogen into the water-insoluble nitrogen which is interesting in my viewpoint, uh, what they're doing, right? So right here, they're actually admitting they have urea in their fertilizer. 
But on the label, they have removed that from their product. Then, as you can see, it says it's dried from all this good stuff down here. And then on the label, same thing, it says dried from all this good stuff. Then it has all the hu humic acid, as you can see, and then it has all the mycorrhizae. Well, first off, the thing that I don't like about urea specifically is it makes the plant stretch. It makes them green immediately, so it doesn't actually tell you what's going on with the plant. It just makes them green and it makes them grow. But if the plant's sick or they're having issues with the plant, it doesn't. Act, you you don't really know that the plant's having a, a sick or an issue that you could have fixed it or amended it earlier on. But because the plant is a fake green and the plant stretching, not growing strong, you don't really know if if there's underlying issues that are going to arise later in your grow. And that's what I don't like about urea specifically. Second is that it stretches, right? When if you have a hard windfall or someone accidentally just pushes on the plant or just a lot of people come up to the plant and smell it, stems are thinner. So the thing about plants that stretch quickly is that the plant really doesn't have enough time to build the cellular structure for the stems to grow and, or, and for the stems to be strong. Let me rephrase, for the stems to be strong. And you have to think about it, right? If you want to be growing big ass monster plants or small ones, just even outdoor plants that are yielding a pound. Remember, you're thinking a pound dry after it's been trimmed off the plant, but you're not thinking about the plant weighing five, six, seven pounds of wet moisture and all the stems and, and the leaves. So you're, you, that plant might be like a, a 10 pounds just moving around in the wind at times. Even if you have just a regular greenhouse, it's still having to support itself. And the plant was forced to stretch out and grow. And let's say you're not adding in all the additional extra stuff to help support the plant or you're not building trellis nets or doing all this other stuff, the stems will start breaking on you. And what I've also found to be really interesting is whenever I use urea, it seems to be like a magnet for some bugs for some reason. Like caterpillars or different things, anyone that's using a high urea base, I'd love to hear the comments down below if other people have actually Notice the same thing I've noticed, but whenever using these more intense synthetic-based fertilizers, and synthetic means man-made, so anything that's ever been processed after extracting from the ground of any natural source or natural dead carcass, and if it's went beyond just a, a crushing and emulsifying process where it's gone through its own extraction process and refining process, it's synthetic at that point. But there are different degrees of synthetic, right? There is synthetic fertilizer that is like a sulfate mineral that is the really the healthiest and cleanest fuel that bugs and animals and critters actually enjoy eating. And then there is stuff like urea that worms and microbiology will turn away from because they don't like the taste. It's like, ugh, ugh, I don't like the taste of my mouth. And so it runs away. The reason why I think these guys are living more in an uneducated environment versus a cognitive dissonance is because look all the good stuff they're putting in, right? They're really making the effort to use naturally organic material. And they actually have a label on their on their bottles saying registered organic input materials. So basically what it's saying is that there are some organic materials that they're putting into their fertilizer, which in my viewpoint is telling me that they're trying, right? They're trying to make their product better. But I don't think they understand how microbiology works because if they did, they wouldn't be putting urea-based nitrogen in their fertilizer. And when I see their label on their bottle and it's not a reflection of what's on the website, and I know we just identified that their website was just probably cut and pasted and it wasn't completed. Still, though, they're hiding it. In my viewpoint, when they're hiding it, they're not listing it and being open and honest about it. I do wonder if they have some value issues, you know. So the, obviously, you see right here throwing, the all, throwing in all the mycorrhizae in the product as well. So they are trying. The next product that I was able to get a label for is their Bloom. And their Bloom, once again, since I don't actually know what their label is because it's, it's a cut and paste down here, when I compare it to over here, they're saying the anatomical nitrogen is actually the good nitrogen, right? It's the decent nitrogen that is synthetically created that I would actually, if you want to use it, that would be the one I recommend, not the urea base. 
or other nitrogen. But I would bet that there is a urea in this one as well, which again, if they're using urea, it's a fake green. So you're, once again, as you go later into blooming, you really need to identify if there's problems happening. And if you can't identify it because of a fake green, well, then later as you go into the harvest or get the end product, do you really think that end product is going to be top shelf where you're going to be able to max out your return on investment? So just kind of throwing that in there. And then also the urea is going to put out more green growth. So you're giving a urea-based fertilizer throughout the entire blooming stage. Uh, so that's also going to be affecting its in yield because you're focusing on more leaf and stem development than you are root and flower development. So by that, that would probably also start to slightly affect your oil concentration on the plant. And then it says it has some mycorrhizae and some other good good stuff derived from seabird, guano, kelp, bat, guano, and yada, yada. So once again, what do I think about this nutrient line? I think if they just removed the urea base, they would have a pretty decent nutrient line because they keep injecting the urea into their entire grow from grow to flowering. I think it throws a, a number of false realities out to the grower thinking he's doing great when he's actually not doing so great. And for a novice grower, big plants, exactly what they're marketing, right? They're marketing green tree. And that's what they're getting with that urea base. They're getting green trees. What they're telling you you're going to get, you're going to get. But from a more experienced grower, those more experienced growers are going to be able to put their hands on the stems and they're going to be able to tell that it's a weak plant. And at the end of the day, if you're growing a weak plant, you're never going to really see the full potential these plants can provide you. If you're going to spend five months of your life growing a couple hundred pounds, I would definitely do it to the best of my ability. Thanks so much, and have a great grow, everyone. Please like, share, and subscribe.